I've got a question about how to apply repetition in the recovery from persistent pain and this uh, lady raised a few points so I'm going to cover that in this video if you're interested watch along I had a question from a lady in the Facebook group who's had pain for over a decade and it's widespread body pain and she's looking to change the patterns around that pain and was asking questions about how to apply repetitions when some things um, feel like it'll be too hard to do it in uh, repetitive patterns at that time and this uh, related to getting up in the morning perhaps uh, driving the car or um, when everything hurts how do you know what to apply the mechanism to and what not to so let's cover those three areas the first thing is um, you're putting capacity in the system first if it's widespread pain and everything hurts um, remember you, there's things you can think that are different breathe that are different there's a movement pattern that's different and there's a, a an interpretation of how you're feeling that's different let's assume that the pain is 24 7 so the nervous system is like completely on well there isn't any objective danger apart from the fact the nervous system thinks there is so when you've almost educated yourself to the point that all oh, right i know that i'm not structurally damaged and there's not another pathology causing this and i might have thought that for a long time but i'm actually starting to add the behaviors uh, that are calm into the system consciously how do i do it well seven to ten repetitions it relates really to how neurons start to connect um, and that's referencing the book based on a number of repetitions to start collecting those organization of cells and what are called neurotags so the behavior becomes automatic and it's the early beginnings of it so if I said my name is Drew 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 after about seven seven times you'll start to notice it's Drew now, if there was a monthly meeting where you had a group of people and you only went once a month, it might take you seven months if it's only one event. So after six or seven months, you pretty much know the people in the group, you know things about them, you know what time to arrive, you know what the arrangements were, you know where you sat, you know what time it finished and who spoke and who didn't. So it doesn't matter the interval of how frequently it is but it's the emotional state you attach to the behavior that actually dictates how it's wired. There's a practicality to applying that. Um, when the nervous system is primed to be on constantly and you, you feel off because of that, then any effort that you attempt, there's not much willpower there, just by definition, there's fatigue and exhaustion, the pains are wearing. So you're actually practice initially before you take on the threats or what are perceived threats by the nervous system, even though they're only consciously getting out of bed or getting in the car or moving, you have to put capacity into the system. You have to show the nervous system it's okay to feel a different state. And it might not welcome that for more than a couple of minutes. Remember, if I've lived like this for ages and you ask me to go and stay here, my nervous system looking down at that and say drew come here is like you're joking aren't you this is where i live this is where i'm fine this is where i am this is me now if i'm not aware of that and that's causing my pain i'm not really aware that i'm driving my pain long after the event happened that developed those patterns so to put capacity in the system you can't ask this system to do more when it's up here and telling everyone it's fine you have to actually say, no, first we're going to put capacity in the system for seven to ten days. Now, what's practical in that? Or could you say something each morning before you get out of bed? That I am safe. I'm, um, I'm objectively safe. I'm objectively safe as I get out of bed. Yes, there'll be pain, but it isn't going to be damage. Now, you keep it very short with thought and words because the mind will tell you lots of stuff to override that. It does hurt it's too much and they won't work and i haven't got time and it's never going to work and if i can't get this fixed who's going to look after the kids who's going to walk the dog and i'm going to end up like your mother and if i like your mother oh my god who will, no one will want me the mind goes crackers when you suggest to it something that's uh, against its conditioning 
but you have to sometimes frame the activity so you can tell it what you're doing. I'm getting out of bed and I'm totally safe. Now you could do that seven to ten times in one go, should you choose to, if you had time and the intent and the energy to. Or you could just do it for seven mornings once, seven to ten days. So remember, slowly is the fastest way to get anywhere. And your nervous system, if you've been compassionate to it, when you're learning French or a musical instrument or to drive a car or to eat with a knife and fork or to learn how to tie your shoelace, it doesn't happen overnight. And remember the compassion to do that comes from the people around you. Now you might never have been shown compassion. I don't know what your life has been like. And compassion can seem threatening to somebody who has never experienced it. It's a calm nervous system state for a nervous system that might have never experienced it. So accessing the software can be feel weird, so you're almost telling someone what compassion looks like. Everybody has it for others. I'm sure of that, but directing it to themselves can feel strange. So let's go back to this morning routine. You could say something once each morning that starts to bed in a pattern, and you don't expect the outcome to change. It's not about the outcome, you reward the behavior. I'm getting out of bed and I'm totally safe. I am totally safe getting out of bed. Yes, you reward the effort in calm in the system, in putting capacity in the system. It doesn't matter where the, the fireworks go off and your body you get out of the bed. There's no objective danger with that. It's just it's saying we don't want to let go of that pattern because you've told us for 10 years and everyone else has that there's real danger or something's being missed. So you have to allow that traumatized person, that traumatized nervous system, whether you've experienced trauma or you haven't, the nervous system has to be traumatized to be 24 seven pain, to think it's dangerous getting out of bed and to hurting in the car. So the morning routine is you could do something first thing thought wise. You could breathe calmly for two minutes before you get out of bed every morning. If that's too much and that's too upset and do three breaths i'm not asking you not to breathe because you're breathing anyway at 15 breaths a minute and probably more in pain you could do it a night before to calm the nervous system that little bit more before you got up in the morning once a night for a week to 10 days seven to ten repetitions with no expectation of any change of just getting used to rewarding it you could pick a movement that's contextually relevant to as you get out of bed, wherever the pain is, as you get out of that part of your body. You start to move it before you place your weight on it, knowing my knees are fine, my hips are fine, my, my back is fine, I've got some wear and tear, but that's not what's driving this persistent pain. But you actually move that part of your body, it might be knee rolls, it might be shoulder shrugs, you might sit on the side of the bed and take some breaths as you do it. You can marry a couple of things together. You don't have to do the whole seven to 10 of every single thing. That's the mind asking you to do it perfectly. It's trying to confuse you into del delivering it perfectly. Ignore it, ignore it. Ask yourself, do I need to follow those thoughts? And catching those thoughts seven times once a day for seven to 10 days is another pathway that you're starting to reaccess. If it's a feeling, so we've got thoughts, we've got breathing pattern, we might have a movement, or we've got a feeling, ask yourself how you feel once a day. How do I feel? And you don't have to do anything, just notice how you feel. I'm in pain, it hurts, oh my God. Notice the thoughts that come with it. The feeling triggers the thoughts, the thoughts triggering the feeling. Ask yourself, is that are those thoughts true? Or are they just conditioned thoughts? And you can see the thoughts and notice the reactions to those thoughts as just feelings that you're objectively safe. Then you distance yourself from joining in with the thoughts and reactions or the thoughts and feelings that then you react to. And the reactions you often use to those thoughts and feelings become painful. They drive the pain along after there's actually any danger. So seven to 10 repetitions has to be practical in your life. 
it's easy in the morning, it's easy at the end of the day, it's easy with breathing because you're breathing anyway. And you can pick a part of your body that moves that doesn't hurt. And if everywhere hurts, then movement can't be dangerous. Pick the least triggering movement you can. I had a lady recently that we practiced standing up and sitting down. Now both hurt. So where do you start? It always hurt. Standing up made it worse. Sitting down made it worse. Paradoxically, practice standing up and it didn't change a thing. When she sat back down, it stopped hurting as much. We don't always understand which pathway we're influencing. But if we're focusing on calming the nervous system in some way, the nervous system is like, it can't not respond. It, it can't cover all bases um, because it only takes your attention and focuses on that. But if you're focusing on something and calming the nervous system, the other alarms start to drop. If I give you another example, someone had a knee pain for a couple of years, lots of fear because it was new and really limiting, an old pattern of trigeminal neuralgia, another old pattern of migraine, if you like. We focused on the knee of calm and the knee, calm and the knee, calm and the knee, calm and the knee. Nothing happened with the knee for four weeks. The headaches and the, the trigeminal neuralgia dropped because we weren't focusing on them as actual targets of letting go. So the nervous system didn't take that as a threat, it just sensed. I'm saying it like it's a ghost in the machine, it's not, but just see uh, the surge through the nervous system is like setting off Christmas tree lights and when you focus on one thing as calm intent for it, it's, it takes the surge out through the lights. So it's put, putting capacity into the system calmly to show the nervous system can feel calm, the brain, the body, through any of these uh, categories, think, breathe, move, feel consistently for seven to ten days and see what resonates with you with no expectation for any change other than I've got this boxed off I do it every night do my breathing every morning I've got it boxed off every night morning done it I sit on the edge of the bed I just say okay, relax my shoulders as I'm going to stand up on my knees if it hurts then I'm, I'm just going to not react once I'm going to respond once if I don't react once that was seven days that's success and I might have to do that for seven weeks getting in the car fair enough you can't get in the car and repeat the whole journey seven times but that's another barometer to come to when the time allows you just mark them as kind of things to come to you don't have to do it all in one go. Remember, that's the mind saying it all must be done now. You're not enough unless you've delivered service and you've done it perfectly. That's conditioning in itself. Think of when someone has 24 hours of pain, then you should know by now that there isn't a physiological condition causing that. And if there was, it long time killed you. You know, 10 years of that. It, 10 years of that is just an illustration and evidence that the nervous system is on such a heightened state and now that you know that you are choosing to be respectful to why that pattern started and you know there'll be something in your life about overload then physical or emotional and you deliberately calming that down so the process of seven to ten repetitions it's important um, in knowing that it takes could be seven to ten repetitions in a minute it could be seven to ten days it could be seven to ten weeks it could be seven to ten months it's how practical it is to do the behavior it's where it is it's an intensity you should focus on putting capacity into the system first almost if you at this point here barely fine you're looking to kind of come down to this level before you add in any ex excitement and that I'll do another video on adding the excitement because that takes a skill too so that you're encoding excitement at a rate which we, which is uh, bracketed if you like by calm behaviors but you can't uh, use those behaviors until you've practiced them I hope that gives you some insight into seven to ten repetitions if you like it's almost adding uh, strength to neural pathways the emotion is the thing that glues these cues together and the more repetitive it is the more automated it becomes and all that happens is the cues that are present on getting out of bed which might be pulling the face tensing up holding your breath swearing at the pain you've got feeling downbeat from it and wanting to get back into bed with exactly the same body within a few weeks sometimes a few hours a few days a few minutes a few weeks a few months 
you get out of bed breathing calmly uh, standing up without the pain shrugging the shoulders and being excited about that new movement being respectful that it's never going to be linear it's sometimes up and down but you are consistent throughout if there's somebody with you to support you great if there isn't then you're it so you've got to be that calm voice and it's all right if you lose it sometimes it's all right if you don't have the energy for it sometimes because that's learning unconsciously that's how it works and if you can be patient with that then the opportunities for recovery open up and it's such a liberating process stick with it don't get too hung up on the numbers of the repetition make it practical make it easy make it accessible for your nervous system and then commit to the consistency and be patient and watch what happens